Tonight, our special transmission as survivors of October 7th attack file a lawsuit against pro-Palestinian students. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Aisha Ashraf. It has been 221 days since the onset of Israel's war. Palestinian Health Ministry says in the past 24 hours, Israeli airstrikes have killed 82 Palestinians. 234 have been injured. The strikes targeted residential areas, including a house and a school in the Nusayrat refugee camp. A house accommodating nearly 100 Palestinians collapsed due to bombing. A Gaza civil defense spokesman says rescue teams have recovered eight bodies so far. Dozens of trapped women and children have been rescued. Israeli tanks have forged deeper into eastern Rafa, reaching some residential districts. More than a million people are sheltering in the area. The Israeli military says it has also expanded activity in Jabalia refugee camp. Gaza's healthcare system is under severe strain. The Israeli military has ordered staff to evacuate Kuwaiti hospital in Rafa. Doctors Without Borders say 12 health facilities have been closed due to violence. No food has entered the two main border crossings in southern Gaza for the past week. It has exacerbated the humanitarian crises, risking famine conditions for 1.1 million Palestinians. The death toll from Israel's war in Gaza is staggering. At the time of writing, at least 35,000 Palestinians have been killed. A report by the United Nations estimates another 8,000 have been buried under the rubble. 79,000 have been wounded by Israeli attacks. Israel's revised death toll stands at 1,139. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has strongly condemned the attack on UN personnel in Gaza. Guterres is urging for a comprehensive investigation. Israeli strikes targeted staff members of the UN Department of Safety and Security. The staff was en route to the European hospital in Rafa. The attack resulted in the death of one staff member while injuring another. All UN vehicles are visibly marked. Guterres says attacks on UN staff are unacceptable. He is calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and the release of hostages in Gaza. A UN deputy spokesperson says 196 UN personnel have been killed in Gaza since October 7th. He says the UN is actively engaged in carrying out the investigation to ensure justice prevails. The White House has strongly denounced an attack on a humanitarian aid convoy destined for Gaza by Israeli settlers. The incident occurred at the Tarkumiya checkpoint near Hebron. Settlers obstructed the convoy, dumped food packages on the road, and set vehicles ablaze. The act of aggression has sparked international outrage. Gaza is facing a dire humanitarian situation with over one million people at the risk of famine. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan is calling the attack completely and utterly unacceptable. This is not an isolated incident. The settlers have been trying to impede aid deliveries in the past as well. The U.N. has also faced challenges in providing aid due to attacks on its facilities by Israeli extremists. A report issued by the U.S. State Department acknowledges that the U.S. weapons may have been used in violation of international humanitarian law by Israel. The report also deems Israel's assurances regarding the appropriate use of U.S. arms as credible and reliable. It allows further provision of weapons. The report says that the intelligence community finds that Israel has inflicted harm on civilians in Gaza. It says, however, there is no direct indication of Israel intentionally targeting civilians. It also admits that Israel has not shared complete information on whether U.S. weapons have been used in abuses. 
Advocates argue that this contradiction highlights the U.S.'s willingness to prioritize arming Israel over adherence to its own laws. The U.S. Advocacy Director at the Center for Civilians in Conflict says it is very clear that the administration is not going to stop providing military support. The release of the report coincides with President Biden's acknowledgement of civilian casualties caused by U.S. bombs in Gaza. Following his comments, the U.S. suspended one shipment of bombs to Israel. However, concerns persist over a possible Israeli invasion of Rafah and the U.S.'s continued support for Israel. Advocates are urging for stronger action to halt arms transfers in line with international law. Survivors of the October 7th attack by Hamas have filed lawsuits against pro-Palestinian student groups in the U.S. They are alleging that the students have ties to Hamas. They are accusing them of supporting terrorism. The suits target students for justice in Palestine, American Muslims for Palestine, and other pro-Palestinian advocacy groups. The lawsuit employs anti-terrorism laws seeking civil damages for alleged support to terrorism. The nine plaintiffs include six survivors of attacks. Five of these survivors attended the Supernova Music Festival. One of them was attacked at Zikim Beach. The suits also target media outlets and UN agencies. The legal battles reflect a wider trend of attempting to suppress Palestinian advocacy. Recently, Congress adopted a resolution that would further stifle speech from organizations like Student for Justice in Palestine. The resolution employs a controversial definition of anti-Semitism. It includes any attempt to draw comparisons between the actions of the Israeli government and Nazis. A recently opened transitional housing service aims to support vulnerable Muslim women and their families in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. The new shelter is part of Sakina Homes. Sakina Homes offers culturally sensitive amenities such as halal food, multilingual programs, and space for religious practices and Ramadan observance. It is the ninth shelter specifically for Muslim women in Canada. Sakina also provides essential support services including counseling and casework. It comes in response to reports of Islamophobia in mainstream shelters, particularly in regions like Newfoundland and Labrador. Statistics reveal alarming rates of gender-based violence in these areas. The tragic loss of a Muslim woman in St. John highlights the need of Muslim shelters. The organization intends to collaborate with local entities to raise awareness and expand its reach. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.